This was a big risk. The first one worked, but are, can we do it again? Can we recreate that magic one more time? And then even again for location three, there were still those questions there. But now that we're moving into location seven, eight, you know, up to 10 or 12, uh, people just see what we do and they have more faith in the system. What's up guys, Donovan here, and I wanna give you a quick update on our location number seven. So as you can see, every time we bring you a new video, it looks a little bit different, hopefully a little bit better. Uh, what we've done since we last spoke to you is we've got more paint on the wall, we've installed our flooring system, and we've got the green light from the town to continue this process moving forward. So I'm really excited about that, and we are on track to uh, be open on time for our August 23rd opening date. We got more to come. What I really wanna to talk to you guys about today is the staffing side of our business and our team building. So something that makes Charleston Taekwondo unique is that we hire for attitude and we train for skill. So the perfect person that would be a great fit for our organization is someone that is happy. They have an attitude of gratitude. Someone that is looking forward every day to have an opportunity to not only better themselves, better their community, and then create confident leaders for our future generations. The one thing that's unique about our business model is that all of our full-timers are tied to the success of the business and to their location. So what that looks like is as the business grows, they have the opportunity to have more freedom in the business and more flexibility as well as make more money. You can literally make as much money as you possibly want to make as long as you're growing your location and growing the business as well. And a great example of that is Stephen Gable. So Stephen Gable opened our Charleston Taekwondo Somerville location in June of 2020, right during a pandemic. Uh, it's had amazing success at that location and in our organization. So he went from you know, moving here, opening a location, expanding and, and literally filling that location inside of a year to now he's actually our director of operations that oversees all of our locations for Charleston Taekwondo. So years ago, Stephen, you moved here uh, from Virginia all the way down to South Carolina to join our organization. You know, think back three years ago, what was going through your head and what made you feel like Charleston Taekwondo was the right place for you and your family? I think the biggest thing was trust. You were very transparent with everything. You didn't try to sugarcoat it and tell us that we were gonna have the world, but you were very open and honest and let us know that the effort that we would put forth would then grow into something that we wanted. You are very upfront about it. You will take a pay cut to come here. You will have some struggles to start. But if you follow the plan and you trust in yourself enough, you will succeed. And the earning potential now is far more than what we ever dreamed we were gonna be able to make where we were. Most people try to do everything themselves out of the gate. Uh, we hire people from the start, train them so that we can open and scale much, much faster. We have to rely on the system because we uh, create the system, we run the team, the team manages the system, and the system manages the students for us. And being able to have systems in place, so at any given point, this is where my kids need to be, this is the activity I'm supposed to be doing with these kids. That helps me to be freed up in case any walk-ins come in, phone calls that need to be made to really make the business move forward. So again, like Luke mentioned, even though he's the head instructor of this location, he's not spending the majority of his day teaching classes, right? The majority of his day is managing the team that manages the system for us. You know, when you have six, seven, eight, multiple, multiple locations, uh, you have more chances for something to go wrong. You know what I mean? So that's, that is the challenge there, but it, that's why you have to rely on your systems and your staff training to make sure everyone's on the same page uh, because you can't be in multiple places at one time. So you have to rely on your team to make good decisions when you're not there. Seeing the staff, I mean, everyone I've seen has basically been in our program for a while, right? So they understand the expectations. They know your leadership style. So a little easier versus hiring someone off the street to come in and run the program. What's awesome is half of them were campers at some point yeah. now that we've been doing it for so long, which is cool. So they know all the routines, they know the games, yeah. And now that they're staff members, they keep it fun. It's really engaging, which is great. Yeah. Because they have an idea of what what's supposed to go on. They probably remember playing these games themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of them do it better than I run it. Because <laughs> they know the fun parts of them. So yeah, I was an athlete, uh, Donovan was my coach, and uh, I stopped competing towards you know, graduating high school. And you know, when Donovan was ready to expand, he gave me a call and was like, you know, hey, would you want a job? Would you want to work with us? I said yes. It wasn't any question, any thought. Um, I instantly put in my two weeks notice where I was working um, and jumped on board and, and went full force with it. Uh, you took the position, you were ready, you were all in, mentally prepared for this, uh, but you had a hiccup, you couldn't move yet. 
right? So tell us about that. Yeah, had a small hiccup. Uh, my wife had just been accepted to a nursing program, so I made the sacrifice to drive from Savannah to Charleston every day for over a year. Yeah, so for those that don't know, that's about two hours each way. So yeah. he'd have a two hour drive here in the morning, he'd work all day long, and then two hours back every evening. It's actually really interesting because we get excited, I present the opportunity, um, sell the dream, sell the vision, everyone gets wrapped around it. Uh, but then when it comes time to actually make that move, people get nervous, right? They get cold feet. So usually about two weeks before a staff member, a full-time staff member joins us, I usually get the call, the freak out call of, I can't believe I'm doing this. Am I actually moving for this? Um, and I just have to reassure them that uh, this is a great opportunity for them. It's a great opportunity for our community and we're doing great things for the next generation of leaders. But the cool thing about us expanding now to location number seven is I'm having less and less of those conversations because we have social proof. Uh, with Torin, you know, he was the second location. So for him, this was a big risk, right? Like the first one worked, but are, can we do it again? Can we recreate that magic one more time? And then even again for location three, there were still those questions there. But now that we're moving into location seven, eight, you know, up to 10 or 12, uh, people just see what we do and they have more faith in the system. When I first reached out and offered you the position, what was going through your brain? I don't know Taekwondo. Uh, and yeah. I was a little nervous. And of course, I'd been at my previous job for six years. So it was hard for me to wrap my brain around leaving there. Um, but I needed to leave. Cool thing uh, about Miss Patty and what we touched on earlier at Kids That Win is that we hire for attitude and then we train the skill. So I'm sure when I first reached out to Miss Patty, she might have been thinking, is this a good fit for me? Can I be successful in this? Like, what does winning look like? But I knew that she had a, a great attitude. I knew she was the exact person that would be successful in this position because I had an experience and a background with her. And again, it's easy for me as a parent because uh, I, I trust her with our students and with our families and our children because I trusted her with my own child and my own family. So Ms. Patty, tell us about your experience at Charleston Taekwondo. I love waking up every day and coming to work, which has been a change for me. Um, I worked somewhere for a very long time and dreaded going to work every day, and now I don't. I want to be here and I want to see what I can do with these children and what we're doing. I like to be a part of that and be part of this community. You know, again, guys, documenting the journey, this was Charleston Taekwondo, this small space right here. And originally I did everything, right? At night I cleaned the mats, I cleaned the bathrooms, I taught the classes, I did all the lead follow-ups. Basically, we were bottlenecked by my time. But as our business has grown, you know, we have more great people on our team, so we've been able to grow faster. But what that's required of me is to change, right? So in, as much as I enjoy teaching on the floor, that is not best suited for my time, right? That is not gonna benefit my team members if I'm constantly on the floor. My personal time is best spent identifying locations, identifying new people that would be uh, potential great fits in our organization, and then having a strategic plan to train them so that we can deploy them out into the community, right? Right now, it's all about expansion, it's all about growth, and that really comes down to having great people on our team.